So we are now recording. Okay. Um, well, hi everybody. Hi Rashmi. It's nice to to meet hi. you. Nice to meet you guys too. You are more than welcome to introduce yourself if you'd like. <laughs> yes, I'm a bit nervous, so forgive me if I stumble or stutter. Um, I am a GSOC student. I got selected for Chaos this year. Yes. Awesome. I'm super excited. <laughs> um, I'm an incoming student at Carnegie Mellon. I am oh. uh, from India. I'm still here because of COVID. I differed from last year, so still sitting around, just chilling while August, until August comes up when I can start, start classes. Um, that's about me, I guess. Um, awesome. yeah. and what are you working on for GSAC, Rashmi? What is the project? Um, I'm working on uh, the Grimoire um, Sorting Hat uh, repo. Um, and I'm, uh, what, uh, to be specific, it's uh, to extend the uh, model for organizations so that we capture more information about organizations. Oh, excellent. Very cool. And what are you, are you not, are you not, you're an undergrad at CMUN? Um, no, no, no. I'm I'm going for masters. Um, oh. I've already done my undergrad. Um, I I did it here in India. Who Who are you working? Can I ask who you're working with? Sorry, what's that? At, at, at uh, CMU, I have a lot of friends at CMU. I'm just curious if I know. Oh, um, who you're I with. am doing a professional course, so okay. as nobody, I am assigned. I, I, there's no professors I know as of now. Uh, so. okay. Well, there's a lot of great people there. Have fun. I to go. Hopefully, if COVID lets me go, let's see. Rashmi, you'll probably get the the cicadas as well. So, if you've never <laughs> experienced the plague of cicadas that come out of the ground every seventeen have, years, ha have you heard about the cicada disease? <laughs> I, I have. I I read a lot of articles about it recently, and I was like, oh god, this is one more thing to like, you know spruce up my 2021 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's a bunch of them apparently that have this fungus disease that causes their butts to fall off oh god it's, it's a <laughs> it's dawn with the uplifting trip. i know <laughs> it's like not only will no, we have cicadas but they're not going to be well i know right <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here, Rashmi. <laughs> yeah, welcome, Rashmi. And, uh, Thank about you. Cicada <laughs> fungus. Time. Sorry. Thank you. Time, maybe we'll just do like a quick round of introductions so that Rashmi knows who who we are. Since we don't have like a packed agenda or anything, and since I'm already talking, I am Don Foster. I work at VMware on um, open source community strategy in our open source program office. Um, I'm on the governing board of the chaos project and i've used uh, lots of the tools over the years so while i was getting my phd i um i used sorting hat a lot actually because i was looking at the linux kernel and one of the things i was looking at was organizational affiliation um so i wished that there had been better data about the organization so i'm super excited that you're working on that <laughs> um, and now now i'm using auger for some of our some of our metrics at, at vmware so i've just i've just been using all the tools yeah, when you're inside the wall, it's easy to know the organizational affiliations. I think it's when you're outside the wall, it, it's a lot harder, um, for sure. So, hi, Rashmi. I am Matt German Prey, and I'm a professor in the College of Information Science and Technology at the University of Nebraska Omaha, and I'm also one of the co-founders and also a board member of the chaos project and been around on this project since the start and a lot of great people in the project kind of all over the place so very great to have you here thank you nice to meet you guys likewise elizabeth go i'm elizabeth i'm the chaos community manager so if you have any questions or you need anything at all, just don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I dropped a link um, to our Slack. I don't know if you're in there yet, but um, that's, oh, uh, we, you know, we've, we've just started kind of using that again. So feel free to hop in there. And if you have any questions, you can ask in there. There's a channel called Office-Hours for newcomers to the CAS project in general. So that you can ask questions in there or in general or wherever. But we're really, really happy to see you. Really glad that you're here. So welcome. Thank you. And I'm Sean Goggins. Uh, Matt and I were together at the founding of Chaos. I'm a computer science professor at the University of Missouri, which is in Columbia, Missouri. 
uh, five hours for mortals and four and a half hours for me from Nebraska. So my first my first trip after COVID is probably going to be to Nebraska. Just <laughs> I miss I miss all the fine things about it. So and Rashmi, the the um the Slack channel that Elizabeth sent you, I think we're gonna be starting a Grimoire Lab channel as well. So there will be like specific channels for the different technologies. Is that right, Elizabeth? Did we kind of? I'm creating it right I think now. That's, okay, I think that's what oh. Benu was saying he wanted okay. to do, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, uh, the single agenda item beyond welcoming Rashmi is um, I have, I would like to see your thoughts on just translations. So this is actually still with GSOC students. So translations are super hard workflow wise, and I just don't have a good handle on how to keep up with translations. So if you recall, we had, let's just say 50 metrics. We did a giant bulk translation on all those metrics. And then they subtly change. So there's two points. One is they subtly change over time. And the second is, is the initial bulk translations aren't always perfect, right? So I think some of the translations <laughs> that like Shoya and King were telling us, they were like, yeah, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of, sort of right. Um, so I, I would like to, to propose, because we have two new students with Yesh uh, and Ritik, is that right? I think they're both doing like workflow stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. They're so working would, on the automate, yeah, on the automated metrics process. So if th if that's a piece of it, then they I will probably- I would love it. for this. Yeah, they've been amazing so far, even like before GSOC started in terms of like helping automate the, just the straight English version metrics release. And if you're all okay, I'd like to, to talk with Yash and Ritik about coming up with at least a proposed workflow for how they think translations could be done They've already proven that they're really solid in thinking about workflow. Um, so it's just, it was more a question just for the group here. I feel like it's been pretty ad hoc on translations and they might help <laughs> with make it less ad hoc and give us something to talk around. I wonder if we can learn something from some of the other open source projects that have done this really well, because I'm, you know, I'm thinking back to when we had, um, when I was working on the, the Migo project, we had a, uh, someone at Intel who specialized in not just translations, but like all of the like localization, the, all the stuff that goes around that. Um, and there are like specialist tools and there are all kinds of things that you can do to help manage the, the translation work. I don't know who to talk to anymore. Like she, I, I think she's retired even, um, but like Mozilla, I think has done a lot with translations in the past. Okay. I'm just thinking, I'm just, I, I don't want us to start from scratch with sure. Google Summer of Code students. Um, but I'm wondering when you say this, um, like Shane Coughlin at Open Chain? Yes, he'd be a good oh. one to talk to. So I, I, so rather than having the, the Google Summer of Code students just like kind of figure out a new process, maybe we should have them go talk to a couple of friendly people. That's a good idea. Who we know have done a bunch of translations and have them, that way okay. we can at least get them off to a good start. That's a great idea. Okay, so you're okay with having like Yash or Ritik kind of take this on, but starting with <laughs> talking with. Yeah, I just want to make sure that they start with the right people and that they're we set them up for success. Right on. Okay, cool. I can do that. Any other thoughts on this? Sean, Rashmi, Elizabeth. I have a related, but not completely related um, thing to bring up. So if anyone has direct things on what Matt just said, speak up. If not. No, uh, I was, translation stuff is hard. I was just thinking um, yesterday, I wonder if we should have a channel specifically for Chinese uh, and a channel that is Spanish so that if we have people from those communities that come in, then they kind of have a, a landing point that's oh. A little less intimidating. I just wanted to float that around. I was going to float it at this meeting specifically, but I, I'm pretty sure Slack would allow us to do that, right? Have multiple languages going on. 
I've never tried. I assert Spanish shares a character set with us, so that's for sure. I would imagine there's a way to do it in Chinese, and it would be great. But like, like if some of our uh, AP participants were able to help read folks in Slack. What, what I mean, I don't, it hasn't. I don't know. If, I don't know if Slack is one of the things that aren't is not available in China. Like Google Docs, you can't get to, for example. So I have no idea. Has anyone been in a Slack with somebody in China? I mean, King's King's in there, but I don't okay, know. Well, if that's he yes. has a work. He might have a workaround. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but um, I I think that's a really good idea. I think it would I mean, be more welcoming. Nobody's really asked for it, so <laughs> so it may it may not even be needed. I might be solving a problem we don't actually have, but um, I just thought it would be kind of nice to have that available if someone wanted it. So. I have no problem with that. Would it just be like a general, <clears throat> like an office hour question or a, an office hour channel, but in Chinese? Yeah, just, thing? yeah, if they want to like have, you know, a channel where they can converse more easily and freely yeah. with people who speak their own language. Um, yeah. I think that'd yeah. be great. And I'd be, it'd be maybe nice to, like Shoya might be willing to kind of watch the channel a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I think on the Spanish Spanish side, I'm not sure Daniel, I would. I mean, yeah. Daniel's already in, so maybe he would just yeah. keep an eye on it to make sure nothing, you know, sorted is happening in there. But I think most of the people on the Batardia team would be willing to, to help out. Well, maybe I'll post it to the mailing list then to say we're thinking about this and just ask if people volunteer. And if no one volunteers, then we might <laughs> we might tap those people to help. Okay, cool. I'm taking minutes. Okay. Well, with that, <laughs> yeah, does I'm anybody that? I'm really surprised the king's not here, given that he sent out the reminder. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to go look at his reminder. The only thing I yeah, can think okay. is that maybe there was a time zone switch or like a daylight savings time switch that has us off. Because it isn't like king to not show up. For sure. Okay. Okay. Well, nonetheless. <laughs> Actually, uh, so I just looked it up and clocks do not change in China. So the answer okay. to that is no, there's no DST. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is still they stopped doing that in 1991. Wow. Uh, I think it's about time for the rest of us. Okay. Yeah, it's according to random Google search. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a necessary thing anymore. I don't do a lot of farming. <sighs> Just causes confusion. It does. Those of you in the US, it changes at a different time than the rest. Of course it does. I know we should we should at least align it with what happens in Europe. Well, it <laughs> yeah. Be, it used to be aligned. And then um, at some point the US, because I remember when I first started working, like I worked a lot with Europe and the time change was aligned. And then yeah. at some point the US government was like, uh, no, we've decided we want some extra extra daylight savings or less yeah they expanded savings. it on both ends. way they made so it bigger they, on both ends yeah so they extended it by two or three weeks on both ends so now we just have this gray area like this right gray zone six where, weeks of global time zone confusion for americans every year yes. and for everyone else yeah caused by us <laughs> so un-american <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> all right well uh, let's see in this meeting, we've learned about cicadas and time zones and, <laughs> yeah. and, and translations. Turns out we had, we did have an item of actual business discussion. All right. Well, with that, I think we're probably good. Um, good to see Likewise. everybody.
Good to see you all. Nice to meet yeah, you, Rashmi. Yeah, good to see you. Welcome, Rashmi. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Nice to meet you guys. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.